right, welcome back to part three of testing your model in x lights using the x lights uh, uh, sequencer instead of using a test function on your controller, which I, sounds kind of odd. Why would you do that? Well, the important thing is is that whenever you're testing a model, um, you have to make sure the model works the right way because what's the point of putting the model up and then when you tell something to go to the left and it actually goes to the right or it goes up instead of down, you need to understand how whenever you put things together and whenever you're testing them that there is a um, that everything is going to work the right way as, as you had planned for it. And then whenever you get out there and you're putting 30 or 40 or 50 props on your home, this is why it's important to test your models before you put them on the house. So in part three, we're going to go through create or we're going to import. We're going to do both uh, models into X lights. So. To start off with, a couple notes for this lesson specifically. Uh, this is not an exhaustive lesson on um, on model creation. There, the the props are already pre-connected to the ports uh, that we're going to be using. It, just in general, I, I want you to know everything's already connected. And then also, we're assuming we're assuming that you actually have the X Lights model ready to test. So, uh, if you built the prop already and wired it already, then you probably have the model somewhere. So, just keep that in mind. This is where we're going to use the model and put it into X Lights. So. Just a, a couple of little housekeeping things. Creating native X Lights models. There's 18 native X Lights models available currently in X Lights. There's three different 3D models: the tree model, the sphere model, and the custom models. All can be in 3D mode. I have an entire series that walks through pretty much every one of these, except for I didn't do the DMX because um, it really didn't have anything that I could really demonstrate it on. So let's go ahead and roll on and talk about the five props that you see behind me in the camera in the video uh, on we're probably looking at people on YouTube right now so hi to YouTube and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started on adding all five of these models now obviously you're looking at the screen it's going one way and you're looking at me it might be going no it should be going the right way so this is the way they are this is how they look right now and uh, this is the uh, the five models that we're gonna work with so what we're gonna do first is we're going to start now this is gonna be in the way here I'll put me down here. Um, we're going to start by assigning a controller start channel. Then after we sign the start channel, which is going to be here, we'll see where it says start channel. We're also going, going to ensure that we have the strings correct uh, for models that have multiple connections to a controller. For example, this uh, Boscoyo Snowflake, this is the Ice Princess. Uh, there's three connections into the into the uh, Pixlite controller that it's taking. Then we're also going to chain a model to it. And as we do the process, you'll see that model chaining does automatically happen in X lights. So as you create a model, it chains the next model to the model that you created before it. And then uh, again, we have five total props spread over four different controllers. And again, um, I'll slide over here. Again. There are five controllers right here behind me, so for those times that I was talking in the other videos, now you can actually see them. They're sitting right there. And again, I, <laughs> I got wires everywhere, so uh, let's go ahead and roll on. What we're going to do is we're going to add the models and assign each channels in output in the X Lights uh, program. So let's go ahead and tab over to X Lights as soon as I find it on the other screen. There it is. So. I'll pop me down here, and what we'll what we're gonna what we'll start with is we'll go into the layout tab, and we have five models. Now the first one over my right shoulder is uh, the, the it, we're going to use the model download with, uh, and the model download is this arrow right here to create a new model. We're gonna click and drag, and we're gonna place it right here, and then we're going to go for a 47 inch snowflake. This is from Boscoya and we're looking for the Ice Princess. Now, I'm gonna click the Insert Model, and this is gonna yell at me because it's gonna make some noise. I don't know if I'm sharing with sound uh, to you people in Zoom or on Facebook, but you'll see these notifications pop up here. And what that did was, uh, there, there's a nice function with X lights now. When you export a model that has submodels inside groups, the groups are attached to the model then. And whenever you download and install them from uh, the downloads, the model downloads, it adds it automatically into your layout so you don't have to do any hard work. So now everything's kind of already grouped uh, as far as those submodels are going. 
but I digress. That is the first thing that we have to do within X Slice. Now, the first thing here is we're going to come over and we're going to give this a controller uh, start channel. It defaults to one, and what that is, that, that one is an absolute channel number. We're going to specify it by clicking the universe radio box here, and we're going to put this on the physical controller that it's going to be run by. We're going to run this off of the Pixlite, and we're going to then, um, it will autom automatically default to the, to the universe number that we're going to start with on that controller. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. It's now assigned to a, uh, to a controller. Now we can tell it what outputs to be on. And for this instance, I'm going to put it on output number one. Now, again, it all depends on how you're connecting up your Snowflake. This custom model can have, excuse me, can have one string. It can have multiple strings. So what we're going to do, I have this plugged in three times. And so I'm going to use three outputs on the Pixlite 16. And then we're going to click on this checkbox here in Xlites for individual start nodes. What it means is, what's the starting pixel that you plugged into string number one? Well, number one, pixel number one. String number two is starts with pixel number 201. I have 200 pixels on the first output. I have 200 pixels on the second output. That means on the third output, I'm starting at 401. And now I can click Save. And we'll, we will go, I, I'll, I'll show you kind of a visual uh, when we go back to the controller tab and uh, we'll, we'll show you the visualizer that shows the breakdown on this as well. So if you were only testing one model, bam, you're ready to roll. But I'm going to keep going because I have all of these across behind me here and I'm going to throw them in here because there's different ways to import models into x -Lights. That was a download. We'll do one more download for the small snowflake here. This is a 24-inch snowflake. This is the Ice Princess. We'll go ahead and insert. And it, all this is saying here is, hey, it, you already have these groups created. Do you want me to add these? And I'm going to say, well, heck yeah, add that. Now look at this. See, the, the, another thing, this is why I like doing some classes, because a lot of little things are baked into these classes that people won't know. Um, when you add a model that already has these same groups, it actually adds those extra submodels in, and it makes all of the work whenever you import a model um, into your layout then all of the submodels are already in those groups and really makes it way, way easier. So that's a nice addition. What, uh, what this little uh, Ice Princess, uh, the, the, the little one did, was it chained itself to the first one that we saw here. But it, what it didn't do was it didn't say, hey, what, what output am I in? So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put this on output number four. I'm going to click off of this, and then I'm going to click Save. So there's our first two models. Let's go ahead. I have this, uh, this little lollipop that I created <coughs> and this little guy is pretty awesome I'm gonna click import because I have a model that, uh, of one of these but it's saved in my uh, save directory and I'm gonna go get it real quick so if somebody shared a model with you this is how you bring it in I'm gonna go into my nutcracker directory I'm gonna go into my 2021 layout and oh look there's the spinner lollipop model so if somebody shares a, a, shares a model with you, this is how you bring it in to x -Lights. So that's, that's number two. Now, in my layout, I exported this. This had two groups. So it's bringing those groups in. Here's the pixel poles and the pixel pole stars. And uh, so those are the two groups. That's nice. I don't have to add that to my groups if I don't want to. It's already done. But now I have this lollipop, and the lollipop, He's plugged into the Falcon. The Falcon is the start universe is different than what is on these. And we're going to go ahead and assign these a start channel and go to universe. And I know my Falcon is dot five zero. I'll go ahead and add them there. It's automatically going to default to the first uh, universe number. That's fine. And then any model I create after this is going to be chained to it. Obviously, I said that. That already happened. And I know that I have connected it to port number one on this Falcon. It's already there. I know it's there. What do you mean? But we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and keep rolling here. Um, we're going to go ahead and import a different way, though, from X Lights. So, uh, well, actually, we're going to create. We're going to create a model using the X Lights layout. So, natively, the star, which is the next thing over top of my left shoulder, I'm pointing that right there 
is the next thing that we're going to go ahead and create. And this one's rather easy. So this star is from Boscoyo. It is 90 pixels. It starts at the top center and it goes clockwise in a wiring fashion. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build the model really quick. So I know how it, it, it's set up. It's one string. It is it, it's 90 nodes. And we can change the layers here to three layers. And the first layer is 20. That's the inside. 30 and then 40 and then the last thing we need to do is give the first pixel a start location so this one starts at the top center and it goes clockwise so that's how this star is built if you built a model then you have to enter it correctly into x lights if you put it incorrectly into x lights if, if you're testing a mini tree and you don't put it in the same way that you that um that you build it then then things aren't going to go exactly right so we'll go ahead and click Save there. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a function that maybe not a lot of people know about. But it, what we can do is while we're in the XLights Layout tab, we can right-click and we can do Import Previews, Models, and Groups. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into my Nutcracker directory and I'm going to pull in that last model that's over there. That's that bow. Uh, and I'm going to go into my 2021 layout. I'm going to click on my RGBFX file. That's where we're going. And I'm going to scroll down until I find bow. Bow, there we go. Bow number two and bow number three. I'm going to put a check mark in the box and I'm going to click OK. Now it's saying, hey, I can't find the start channel for this model uh, because it's attached to something different. Well, that's OK. Well, there's the bow. Let's move them over here, make them a little bigger. And what we'll do is for both of these, we need to assign these to a controller. So we'll go ahead and we'll change the start channel for the star. So we're going to put the star in the falcon. That's what we'll do. Hopefully it works now. Oh, it doesn't like the falcon. Yeah, I'm going to have to move this guy out of the way here. Visualize. Uh, yeah, that's really odd. Did you upgrade to 18? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on 18. It's not on there. Okay. Close hmm. it. You have to go back to your layout tab and save it. So that's. Yeah. See, it's there. Somebody so. Somebody must have messed around with the code on it. They must have locked the code out or something. So let me um, visualize the. Whoops. Because the lollipop went on the pocket beagle. So let's do that one. The pocket beagle, we'll put it on there. That's on 170. And I'm not worried about a universe number for that either. And this should be on the first output. There. And that that one worked, no problem. Finally, the bow. The bow is going on to the... Um, that is going to go on to the E6804, which is dot fifty six. We'll leave it at 60, click OK, and it's going on to the first output. Yeah, that's really odd. That that's I, I didn't have that happen before. So, um, But that's the way it goes. I mean, you're going to have issues like that. So um, basically, that is all there is to setting up your models and then also setting up your controllers. If you're only having one controller and you only have one model, Basically, you don't have to go through that, but the goal was to teach you how to do a model import from a model that somebody shared with you, also to download, or also to right-click and import previews, models, or groups, and that way you could bring it in from something that was already existing where you didn't have to work to add things into it. That's going to be the end of part three for, um, for getting everything ready and set up and creating the import for the models in X-Lights. The next part will be the final part, which is on actually outputting to lights, making sure the uploads are done, and we'll move on to that and just uh, into the next video. So guys, thank you for watching this video.